Let me introduce our uh, panelists. Uh, Sam Abrams. Sam is the manager of player relations, youth, and sports programs with the Detroit Tigers. As part of the Public and Community Affairs Department, he assists in the planning and implementation of player initiatives and fundraising. <clears throat> he also manages community outreach activities and programs focused on strengthening and expanding youth baseball and softball programs throughout the state of Michigan. Jay Alexander joined Detroit PAL in November 2014 as the Philanthropic Strategic Partnership Manager after spending get that right, 17 years as head baseball coach at Eastern Michigan University and Wayne State University. Jay served on the Rules Committee for all of college baseball, All-American Committee, and he was North Central Regional Chair. Jay is a proven leader with a history of developing student athletes to reach their full potential. He's produced Major League Baseball draft picks and academic All-Americans in his tenure. He was one of three African-American head baseball coaches to the, um, in the country, excluding historical black institutions. Gary Gillette is an author, editor, and consultant. He's written, edited, or contributed to dozens of baseball books and websites, including ESPN.com and TotalBaseball.com. He was the editor of the ESPN Baseball Encyclopedia, executive editor of the ESPN Pro Football Encyclopedia, and a contributor to six editions of the seminal encyclopedia, Total Baseball. And Gary, we've got some of those in the WDET newsroom. Uh, Michael Porter retired from DTE Energy in 2011 after 13 years as Vice President of Corporate Communications and 35 years in Corporate America overall. He's the current freshman baseball coach at the University of Detroit Jesuit High School. His leadership experience and commitment to his community has earned him several awards, including the American Heart Association Legacy Leadership Award and alumnus of the year from the University of Detroit Jesuit High School and Academy. And Amber Spears is a graduate of Cass Tech High School. She earned her Bachelor of Science degree in Engineering from the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor and her Master's of Science degree in Engineering from UT Austin. Throughout her life, she's been active in sports such as cheerleading, basketball, dance, softball, swimming, cross country, hiking, and rowing. She served as a captain her senior year at Cass High School of the softball team and rode on the University of Michigan's novice rowing team. She's also a member of the Jackie Robinson Foundation Alumni Association. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for the panel, please. Uh, Sam, let, let me start with you. Um, you're working with youth, you're with the Tigers. What does Jackie Robinson mean to uh, folks that you run into, both on the team and, and young people? Well, for those that are on the team, um, many of the African-American players that have come through the organization, especially around Jackie Robinson Day, um, talk about him from the standpoint that he was a great athlete. Um, he was a leader. He was a trailblazer. And many of them say that um, if it were not for him, they would not be where they are today. Many of them look at him for some of the values that he um, displayed at the time when he was playing, and it just is really has been really encouraging to them. Yeah. Um, let me add, let me follow up on that. So as you, you deal with players on on a regular basis in in your work, um, and and they think about Jackie Robinson. Mm -hmm. Do any of them aspire to be Jackie Robinson themselves? No, I think everybody's trying to aspire to be who they are. Um, again, they look at Jackie Robinson for you know who he was back then, but I can give you one, uh, two examples. Um, Curtis Granderson, who is no longer with us, who's um, um, in New York, and then also Torrey Hunter. Both of those guys are just great, fantastic individuals um, that just really want to be the best that they can be um, in their craft, giving at a time um, which is now um, doing what they can do to, to the game of baseball and to the African-American uh, community as a whole. Michael, uh, I want to ask you, uh, relatively along the same line, I'm, I'm going to pick on you just for a minute, being a cub, a fellow cub uh, of U of D High. 
When you're dealing with these uh, freshmen on the baseball team, do they even know who Jackie Robinson is? I suspect they do know who Jackie is, uh, but you know, for him, for them, he's a distant historical figure. You know, kids, 14-year-old kids today, were born after 2000, after 9/11. You know, you have to keep that in mind. So while they may they may not know who he is, I think he still represents somebody who can be very um, uh, symbolic for them, as somebody who was very focused, very dedicated, very committed to a cause. Okay, had Jackie Robinson not persevered the way he had, baseball uh, probably would have integrated far more slowly than it did. Had Jackie Robinson not been a team-oriented player, the Brooklyn Dodgers probably would not have had the successes that they had. So uh, let me ask you, Jay, um, you deal with, uh, you've dealt with baseball, you deal with philanthropy. Um, in a lot of ways, uh, he, he bridged many gaps, uh, you know, for the country, uh, as we saw near the end, for baseball. Uh, let me ask, first of all, what, what does Jackie Robinson mean to you? Well... He means a lot because leaders are those and entrepreneurs are those individuals who do the things that others are not willing to do. So with Jackie, uh, he inspired my own career because I was a successful sales rep for a reputable uh, company and I took an 80% pay cut to be a baseball coach. And, and since I lost, uh, I lost all my benefits, just to be a baseball coach, and then it turned into it because I said, well, if somebody like Jackie Robinson can, can do this in an arena where he had no opportunities, per se, and the fight was against him, that I have some support that I can do it too. So for me, he was an inspiration for me to go ahead and, and try to get into the game of baseball. And in college, it's still predominantly white. And, and so, you know. Walk, walk, walk us through it, uh, your, your thought process briefly of giving up this career for baseball. What, what went through your mind, and how did Jackie Robinson play into that? Well, it's funny, because like President Obama and like Jackie Robinson, they had great females in their lives. <laughs> and I had a strong teacher. I have a strong teacher, uh, and, and she is absolutely marvelous, and she said, no, most of us don't get to do what we love. I'm doing what I love. You have an opportunity to do what you love. Why, we, why are you even thinking about it? And I later married her, maybe about six, seven months later. But <laughs> she, you know, she encouraged me through that whole process. Um, Amber, let me ask you, uh, obviously you are a talented, talented athlete. Um, how, how did Jackie Robinson influence you? Jackie Robinson influenced me because it seemed like he had natural talent. I can't say that I had natural talent. Um, when I was a rookie, everyone knew it, and I worked extremely hard uh, as a freshman and sophomore in high school to be amongst the starting uh, group, group uh, because two of the freshmen who came in with me, they were actually uh, starting as freshmen and they were some of my closest friends, so I was surrounded by them and that really motivated me. And during my senior year, I became a captain along with them. So it was really working very hard to get um, to where I was and I could kind of look at Jackie Robinson and say he had a natural talent, but it couldn't have always been easy uh, to do what he did and uh, just to continue to perfect what he already had um, still took a lot of effort and he's always smiling in all the footage but I'm sure he wasn't <laughs> always smiling when it, behind the scenes because um, it's a lot of work, physical work um, that goes into doing a lot of what we saw on the screen. Uh, Gary, l let me ask you as uh, someone who's studied baseball history and uh, compiled a lot of it. Um, for someone in the audience who m may know something about Jackie Robinson but may not know about who he was other than breaking the color barrier, 
How great of an athlete was Jackie Robinson? Oh, that's an interesting question. Uh, Robinson was one of the greatest athletes of the 20th century. Um, it's hard for us to realize now because players can't play multiple sports. I mean, Bo Jackson and Deion Sanders being rare exceptions because the level of talent is so high. But um, athletes like Jack Robinson could do it because he had tremendous natural ability. He also was incredibly smart and he was a quick learner. So it, it isn't enough just to have that natural ability. There are lots of guys who have natural ability. You have to also pick up the tips that the guys been playing the sport for 10 or 15 years you're competing against. No, and you have to pick them up quickly or you can't compete at their level. You also have to be smart enough to understand what your strengths are and how to maximize them and what your weaknesses are and how to minimize them. Um, Robinson in baseball was not, he said he had natural talent, and he did, of course, he was a tremendous athlete, but he was not a natural baseball player. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, when it was uh, thought that he might be selected to be the African-American player to integrate Major League Baseball, or professional baseball, because he had integrated the minors first, uh, several of the older Negro League players took him aside and mentored him and showed him how to do things because he had such, he had talent, but he hadn't refined it yet. He actually only played one year in the Negro Leagues. People don't know that now. He played at UCLA, and then he went in the Army. Unfortunately, the selection that we saw tonight did not include his time in the Army, because that's really dramatic and really amazing what he did and what happened to him. Came out of the Army, played one year of Negro League ball, and then went to uh, the Dodger system. So, I mean, he was a titanic figure in American history. One of the reasons I got involved in baseball as a profession was not the baseball. It was how I could see everywhere I turned, American history was intertwined with baseball history, and that baseball was the story of America in so many ways. And in the 1940s, with Jack Robinson and Branch Rickey, the story of baseball became the story of American history because baseball was one of the key elements in the civil rights struggle. People don't think of that now. They think of Robinson as integrating baseball. But people who served in the civil rights movement in the 60s and 50s would tell you how much it, it mattered to have Jack Robinson stand up and do what he did. And it was incredibly important to them and incredibly important to African Americans in general to see that he could do this before the battle was joined, so to speak, at the Edmund Pettus Bridge or joined in the streets of Birmingham with Bull Connor, with Sheriff Connor. Sam, let's change direction just a little bit. Um, you live inside the baseball world. Um, you've seen the excerpts of this movie. Um, you've seen other baseball movies uh, about Jackie Robinson. Where does this uh, fit on a, on a scale for you of Jackie Robinson movies? I, I don't want to put you on the spot about that. I'm sorry. Would, let, let me, let me I, rephrase I would, You know what? I would have to say um, definitely at the top, and I'll tell you why. I mean, um, the movie 42, I, I, to be honest with you, I saw it probably five to seven times. Um, I saw it uh, during a screening. I was on a panel discussion just like this. I mean, I've seen it at home. What um, was so intriguing about this is that a lot of the history and the behind the scenes things that were not shown in 42, I would say, um, was very exciting for me. Um, hearing the part about the um, Pee Wee Reese and Jackie Robinson on the baseball field with the hug, I mean, to me, that sounds like the natural story. But to hear that that's a myth, you know, I'm going to go back and do some research <laughs> myself. How can that be a myth? I mean, that, that, but it, that's a good story. So I would have to say, um, definitely this is great, and I can't wait to see part, part two. I'm with you, yeah. I'm with you there. Yeah. Um, Jay, let me, let me ask you, uh, part of what we saw here was that transition from baseball player mm -hmm. uh, eventually to entrepreneur, mm -hmm. uh, but, but entrepreneur who is out for not just himself, but for the entire community. Mm -hmm. uh, how did that hit you? Uh, I mean, that hit, that hit me right there. It's, 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 in a sense, it's, it's, I'm, and by any means, I'm not saying I'm anywhere near where Jackie Robinson was, but it's kind of like where I'm going in, in, in my future and what I'm doing now for Detroit Police Athletic League 
and trying to get our inner city individuals back into sport uh, around the city. And, and, and I think that it, it hit home in a couple different areas because I'm refining myself, so to speak, to try to see uh, other than baseball, right? And so now it's what political arena you want to get into, but there's a, a, a thousand opportunities out there for, for myself and for the kids that we serve at Detroit Police Athletic League and just getting them out there and, and letting them know that those opportunities are out there. You know, and, and, and whenever you can see an individual like what he's done, because everybody's got their thing, right? That was Jackie Robinson thing. That doesn't make him less of a man or more of a man. It's just what he believed in. And, and everybody's got to have their thing, and it's, and it's okay. And, and so I think that that can resonate with me and the individuals that I run into at PAL, uh, because I can tell them, hey, everybody's got their thing, right? And you just got to stick with what works and what you believe in and continue to work hard for it and go forward. Let, let me ask you, you and, and Sam both, because uh, you, you both deal with youth um, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, how much of an impact do you feel that you're having, that your program is having on, on kids in Detroit? Well, I, I think we are, again, we are the youth sports program in the city of Detroit. And, and we, are, we affect those kids in so much, such a positive manner because we get them off the streets from the, the wee hours, of, I mean, the, the most dangerous hours of three to six you know, throughout the day. Not only that, we have other opportunities of mentorship. We have 2,000 outstanding volunteers. Uh, we have, uh, you know, over 13,000 kids that we serve. And what happens is we have uh, a bunch of programs, for example, a Math Savvy program. We work with Skillman and to better the neighborhoods. We, we give so much mentorship. We do uh, youth empowerment series for girls and boys. We give them every opportunity to be successful. And in fact, there's a, a quick story is that we did a boys' empowerment last year. And an individual, uh, they had to come in and everybody got a card and it says you had an education, so your salary is going to be this. You don't have an education, so your salary is going to be this. And then they said, what's your wish list? So the guy, the, the, he and his buddy was next to each other and they looked and, and he says, hey man, <coughs> we're going to be poor <laughs> because we don't have education. It's like, this is all we can make? You got to get rid of that BMW. You got to get rid of this. And so reality set in, and we were able to do that for our kids. Not only give them an opportunity to compete, learn the, learn the values of commitment and being a part of a team, but we also are going to teach them the right and wrong ways of, of, of the world. So I would say that I think we're having a tremendous impact for those that we reach. No question. Um, for those that we don't, that we're still trying to reach, obviously, other sports, other activities, kind of have them. Um, I manage a program called Play Baseball Detroit, which since 2008 has impacted over 100,000 youth uh, in the city, I'm not in the city of Detroit, but all throughout the state of Michigan. Um, not just in sports though, I also um, host the Jackie Robinson Art Essay and Poetry Competition every year, which Amber is one of uh, my final judges. And um, so we get about 600 pieces um, of art, essay, and poetry in every single year. And not only um, the message that Jackie Robinson sends, not only is it happening within the urban community, but it outstretches to every community. And some of the work that we get back in, and actually my office is filled with nothing but art from high schoolers and middle schoolers, and it's some good stuff. Um, and so to, to answer that question, um, his legacy is, is awesome when you talk about the values that, that Jackie Robinson not just brought to the game of mm -hmm. baseball, mm -hmm. but to the world. And I hope I answered your question. You did, All right. you did. <laughs> uh, Amber, let, let me ask you, um, being involved and in going to be a, a, a judge uh, for uh, the, the scholarship, what, what does, how, how to put this, Given your experience and your love for sport, how, how has that changed your life? I think that playing um, a sport and a team sport really enhanced my um, ability to work in the community. Um, when I was younger, I pretty much 
knew my church home to be my community. And when I got to high school, that kind of expanded to the softball team. And I was a tutor for the for the um, my classmates. And a lot of times when I became the captain, I took on a lot of responsibility with permission slips and communicating with parents and all of these types of things um, that I realized I was more of like a community outreach uh, aspect of it. And when I got to college, even though um, I only rode, uh, played a sport one year, that was my sophomore year I rode, uh, I really took the community um, work to a larger setting and I was able to work with the uh, National Society of Black Engineers and raise money for uh, Haiti uh, one year after the earthquake. And I was also able to work with uh, Adams Elementary in Ypsilanti and uh, work on a, a science, technology, engineering, and mathematics program there. And so the, the sport was one aspect of it, but the community organizing was something I think even larger that I didn't realize was cultivating in me during that time. All right. I'm afraid that's all the time that we have for uh, tonight. Thank you for coming. We sure appreciate it. Thank you watching at home or in the office. We appreciate you coming and joining us as well. Thanks to all the folks here at the Detroit Historical Museum as well as DPTV. I'm Jerome Vaughn, and round of applause for the panel, please. <laughs>